came to pass that the Lord has decided to remove the veil of love. And when it came forth, it became as a great crescendo of the ages, the fireworks of the heavenlies, and the great celebration of all the hosts for that marvelous word of love's most wonderful hope and greatest glory will turn out to be far meaner in the spirit towards unlovingness than anyone has ever imagined. So in this hour, realize that as the Lord removes his veil, it will be far more explosive than dynamite, much more volatile than a thermonuclear warhead, and much more destructive unto hatefulness than electric chairs ever could have been. And in this hour, we must rejoice and we can rejoice because there's clarity of vision and clarity of understanding as the Lord removes the veil. And as it's removed, we can see clearly now that the reign of unloving understandings has brought, giving us nothing but desolate heritages as Isaiah 49, 8 foretold. For in this hour it is clear that those who love others conditionally have no real divine love at all. And to be on the wide road to the destruction of love is asinine and silly because slowly but surely we rationalize and justify why it's okay to stop loving this one, to stop loving that one, as our forgiveness goes totally away. And where there is no forgiveness, there can be no true love divine at all. So in this hour, for those that desire love to come forth, we must gain new understandings that the Lord's love is a candle to be lit and if we will not share the good news of the gospel of his love, then what's it all been about, Alfie? <laughs> so let's get it together. And I ask people to please like and subscribe uh, because this message of the everlasting gospel, the flying scroll of Zechariah 5 and Revelation 14, uh, John the Beloved said that when the everlasting gospel comes forth it must go again to all people to all tribes to all nations and in this hour the mystery of God is over the mystery between the bride of Christ and the mystery of the groom and the marriage supper of the lamb is here upon this latter day mountain filled with overflowing delicacies of spiritual food who would come and feed the master household meat while the master is away christ himself foretold of one who would restore all spiritual truths before christ's return in uh, matthew 24 45 and so in this hour there is a great mountain of food prepared. And uh, just as no marriage can ever survive unless the love is committed love and dedicated love and faithful love and unwavering love, uh, love that is not double-minded, all else is not perfect. And our Lord only has perfect love. He could not make a, a rock so heavy that he could not move it. He could not make creatures like a little doggy with unconditional love who has greater love than he. And the truest truth of all is that his love has been obscured and looking through a glass darkly, we have not seen his love veiled. And now in this hour of his love's greatest power, he removes the veil off his latter day mountain. And he says unto all people whose love is moving forth as a little child, he says, I am your God, you are my people. And the candle will become as a rainbow if we will light that candle of hope. 
For the Lord says, I have forgiven your iniquity and I shall never remember it. I shall remove it as far as the east is to, from the west. And instead of crimson, it shall be white as snow in his all-seeing sight. For as soon as uh, he sees us, not as we are, but as we will be, the second we go into glory, uh, we are as sinless as the day we are born, because we are would then just be a spirit of love, and all of our uh, wretchedness has been in our flesh. So realize in this hour there is no good man, no, not even one. It's never been about what we've done for him, rather what he has done for us. And so praise the Lord without ceasing in this hour as he restores marriages with his word of peace. Uh, and so it came to pass that uh, a son of Lebanon, Khalil Gabran, the Holy Spirit came forth unto him as the whitest dove of love, the dove of the ages that transformed in his mind's eye into the most regal eagle of the eons. And he allowed Cahill to mount up on eagle's wings, to fly high towards the sapphire sea of the crystalline ocean of his bottomless adoration, which he's now pouring over all flesh, as it is written in Joel 2 and Acts 2. And Christ cannot even return if the restoration of his love is not cemented in this world, as Acts 3.21 says. And so it came to pass that the Lord blew upon uh, Cahill Gabran, uh, his most amazing breath of love, the anointing, and he brought the fire of love's uh, passion into Khalil's heart. And uh, it came to pass with inspiration that all of us have had. God inspires each and every one of us, for we are made fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of our beloved love of the ages, who is the beloved, the blessed, and the adored. He is our majesty of majesties, and greatly to be praised is he, for his mercy shall re endure forever. And for that reason, in this hour, he is excited, for it is written, it shall be considered in the latter days, Jeremiah 30, 24, that he says to all people of love, as you walk the road of unconditional love, your marriage shall prosper and thrive. It shall not just survive. So rise up in the passion and fervency of love unfettered, love unbounded, love loosened, to go around the circle of the earth to correct many wrongs. And so Khalil, inspired of love, is said, as far as marriage is, two shall be one. And they were born together, and together they shall be forevermore. And they shall be together when the whitest wings of death scatters their day. A, they shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But the spirit of love says, let there be spaces, though, in your togetherness. And let the marvelous winds of heaven's most glorious uh, glory of the radiance of love, let that dance between you, like the melody and harmony that comes together as one beautiful sounding music. So it's time that we should love one another, but make not a bond of love but make a promise of devotion and a promise of faithfulness and a promise of forgiveness. And so let your love be as a moving sea between the seas of the souls of your, sh your shores and the shores of your souls. And let your love for each other overflow and fill each other's cup uh, but drink not from one cup, drink two, and let each of you give one another your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone, 
For surely we are born alone and we shall all die alone. But if we will give our hearts not to each other keeping, but seek ye first the kingdom of love and uh, the unconditional love that is connected and all things will be added. So praise God, this is the hour that he is instructing us in his unconditional love, saying, I am your God, you are my people. I have forgiven you and never will remember it. And for that reason, end of uh, Hebrews 8 says, when that covenant is given, all faith on earth is obsolete because this is the perfect law of love. There are no conditions at all in his covenant. And that's why if you read Jeremiah 31, it declares that he desires to remove all unloving, bad religiosity from off of us to bring forth loving spirituality instead. And so we need to stand together, but not yet too close together. For the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak tree and the cypress grow not in each other's shadow. And the woman who held a, a babe close to her suckles her babe and loves the babe. But when two become one, they are unified in the oneness of love. And for a moment, as they take their eyes off themselves and look up unto the heavens, unto he who is love living within all of us, those who love are born of him and know him well, because he is love moving forth as a child. So let us embrace each other as we embrace a baby, for we are to be one another's babe. And with that, I invite you to come back to this channel and dwell here a little while. For if you do, all the answers to the universe will be opened unto you. I have had revelation of revelation. And it came to pass within the moment of our love of the ages coming forth as Emmanuel. It came to pass that within the moment of a moment that Abraham lifted the knife over his son, Isaac, uh, something, a miracle happened. Emmanuel, our God with us again, was committed into coming the first time. For if he had not, it only would have proved that a man, Abraham, had greater love for God being willing to lay down the life of his own son if God did not do the same thing for him, it would have proved that man did not love man as much as God, we could love him. And so in but a moment of a moment, the our star of stars and our truest star of Bethlehem was delivered unto mankind by a prayer and a whisper that comes forth by the most blessed wind of the Holy Spirit. So let us arise as a beautiful balloon and let us go up, up and away in beautiful balloons of love. And as we uh, ascend by the spirit of blessedness, by our own hearts overflowing with the liquid love that uh, the floodgate of heaven is pouring out as we ascend, we will get close to he who is the love and uh, we will shine and reflect his glory, his light all the days of everlasting tomorrows.